Hey everyone. So today I'm going to be going over the top six patterns for coding interviews. And I've already done a lot of coding interviews in the past. I've gotten offers from companies like Meta, Amazon, Bloomberg, those are the, some Fang companies or Fang similar companies and later stage companies like Rippling and super early stage companies like Nova Credit. So I've been through the process for Fang companies all the way down to small startups of 30 people. And yeah, I did some reflecting on what is the most common coding patterns that you'll see. And that if I had to focus on just a small subset of the coding patterns, which ones would I master to be able to land these jobs or just have the highest percentage chance of actually doing well at interviews for each of these companies there's been i mean five interviews each that's at least passing 25 interviews so i have a pretty large data set and these are not just the only companies that i've got offers at these are just some of the big ones so let me get quickly into what are the top six patterns for coding interviews the first yeah um the first one is two pointers the next is sliding window. Then we have the depth first search and understanding depth first search as well as the variance, which is pre-order, in-order, and post-order. Breadth first search, backtracking, and, and, all, and then binary search. These are the top six coding patterns. I think if you are able to master these, you'll be able to solve at least, I would say 85% of coding interviews. And I don't think it will take you that long to master these patterns. Let's see. So I actually built a whole playlist. So I have videos on every single pointer where I deep dive or deep dive into every single pattern. So I deep dive into two pointers. I deep dive into sliding window, depth first search, pre-order, all of the different all of the different coding patterns I dive deep into. You can see these videos are long because I all, I go from explaining the theory for the first 10 minutes or less and then I go into examples that I think are super useful for understanding the patterns and in this video i'm pretty much going to do a high level overview of what i covered in all these videos and if you want to get a more in-depth explanation please click into this playlist i'll be sharing this out or linking at the linking it below and then you can click into those um, coding patterns and dive deeper into each one so let's just go into the first one the two pointers so the two pointers so I have, a, I have a video on this as well. Pretty much with the two pointers, let me zoom this up. You, usually two pointers is, like I mentioned in this video, is you're, put, you're putting pointers in different areas of the array and they can either move in the same direction, like I mentioned here, they can either move in the same direction, they can move towards the center, or they can move away from each other. So moving in the same direction is going like this way. They can move towards the center or they can move away from each other. So those are the different variations that you need to know when it comes to two pointers. I explained the theory for the first 10 minutes. Then the first example is the, I think, oops, got hit with the ad. Let, let that roll out. But yeah, the first, ex I go through an example where I have three examples in this video. I have one where the pointers are moving the same direction towards each other and away from each other. So yeah, just practice working with pointers, practice on iterating pointers, pointers through arrays, link lists, all of that, and understand the different variations and try one of each of the different variations. So yeah, I would just suggest trying out this, go, going through this video and trying out the different questions that I shown because they're yeah different ways to do two pointers. Let's see, what's the next one? The next one is a the next one is a sliding window pattern. So sliding window, we're pretty much you're you're using sliding window is when you're trying to calculate subarrays. The, Mac, the optimal subarray or the optimal substring. So I explain it in depth in this video, but there's two, what I'll say is right now is there's pretty much two types of sliding window patterns. There's, there's sliding windows where the window is static. 
so the window size stays the same the whole through the data structure iterating and there's ones where the sliding window is dynamic so you grow and shrink the sliding window to capture an optimal subarray or optimal substring and you should understand how to do both variations and there's yeah I, I have examples of one that's where it's a fixed subarray or a fixed sliding window and then I have a example where the sliding window is dynamic and it's pretty boilerplate honestly once you get to understand it that's why these coding patterns are important is once you know it it's pretty much boilerplate and from there you could just apply it to other questions that are adjacent to the question you're doing right now that's number two sliding window then let's get into depth first search depth first search i kind of broke down into two different videos because i wanted to explain just a simple depth first search and explain how to do the depth first search iteratively iteratively and recursively let's see and I, I i get into the theory of why we need a data structure like depth first search or sorry a, pa a coding algorithm like depth first search to traverse non-linear data structures that's an important thing to know there but yeah Pretty much when it comes to depth first search, understand when it could be used and understand how to do it iteratively and recursively. So those are the two examples that I, I do here. I do one with iteratively. Being an artist Keep getting hit with the ads, that's crazy. But I might need to buy premium. Just for, I, I have I, I, I have YouTube, so I mean, I use YouTube a lot. I might just buy premium. But what I'm gonna say is, for depth first search, make sure you understand depth first search both iteratively and recursively. Yeah. What else? What else do we have here? Um, once you can do depth first search iteratively and recursively, I have a separate video of, of the pre order, in order, and post order traversal. These are more applicable when you're doing a recursive depth first search. But understanding the variance of DFS traversal is very important. I mentioned in this video, but some questions could be only solved with an in order, or some questions could actually only be solved with a post order. So being able to know the variance and when to use them is important, and being able to code those up. So in this video, I explain the different variations, and I go through examples where you could only solve it with a pre order, you can only solve it with an in order, and then you could only solve it with a post order. Yeah, so that's depth first search. Learn it recursively, learn it iteratively, learn the pre order, in order, and post order, and when and where to apply them. And you should be really good at depth first search. Next, let's get into breadth first search. So, breadth first search is a, another graph traversal algorithm. So, we got, we're going to BFS now. BFS is another graph traversal algorithm it pretty much allows us to explore depth first search explores paths all the way down before it backtracks but breadth first search kind of explores all the paths at the same time level by level so this helps you solve the class of problems most of the times with graph problems and tree problems you could just solve it with a depth first search but if it ever starts telling you to find the shortest path or it tells you to explore level by level, then you need to know how to do a breadth first search. So it's similar to depth first search, but instead of a depth first search, you use a queue. So I would just say, just learn how to implement breadth first search. And yeah, I have examples of questions that you can use, that you can practice on, where one is a level by level order traversal, and then one is a shortest path question. And I think those are the two most common use cases for this. So make sure you work through those problems and understand breadth first search. I go through the theory and everything. So saving that for you as homework to work on in that video. Let's go to the next one, backtracking. So backtracking, so I purposely, in my coding patterns, I purposely work, went over depth first search, pre-order, I, I went through these ones first because I want you to understand how, 
I, I want you to visualize trees because trees are very important um, because in backtracking, backtracking is similar is very similar to a depth first search. It, it, it pretty much performs a depth first search on a like decision tree. That's that's what I mentioned here. So I want so make sure you cover these topics before you get into backtracking. But backtracking is a pretty essential solution. A lot of questions could be solved with backtracking. And dynamic programming sort of builds on top of backtracking. So once you understand backtracking, you can understand dynamic programming, top-down dynamic programming, because all you need to do is start caching results in your backtracking algorithm to get it to work for dynamic programming. And the boilerplate is very, very similar. So yeah, backtracking pretty much is any problem you'll see when it's telling you to generate all or you need to search all the different solutions. So yeah, I go through a few more examples here. I go through one where a classic one where we're generating all subsets. So it's one of those generating all, so we need to do a backtracking. And then one where we need to explore all paths. This is crazy. Getting hit. This is gonna, this is still going up. This is gonna be a meme of getting hit with ads. Um, yeah, backtracking. Then I have one. I have one back back classic backtracking where we're generating all the different subsets. So that's the first case there. And then the next case is where when we're pretty much searching all paths in a grid or a, or a tree or a graph for a solution. So make sure you understand that backtracking is very key. It helps you, it builds on top of depth first search and, but then it also is foundation for getting into something like dynamic programming. So please understand that. And yeah, let's get into the last one, binary search. Binary search is just an important concept and this video is dropping tomorrow and this video I'm making right now will drop the day after that. But everyone knows what linear search is, is just scanning from left to right. Um, those are usually O of N solutions, but binary search allows you to cut the search space in half every single iteration, which leads to log N solutions. So when you have a problem, you can cut the search space in half at every iteration. You can get to the result a lot faster. So understanding binary search is very crucial. I've seen this, this comes up less than the other ones, but it still comes up, it still comes up enough where you need to learn it. But learn binary search. This is boilerplate code as well. Once you learn it, you'll see that I have different examples of just basic binary search. So yeah, you could, in binary search, you can binary search for, you can be given an array and, and binary search for an element in that array, or you could be binary searching for a value. So this is, I, I show just basic binary search so you get to understand the syntax. Then I show a question where I binary search for a value. And then afterwards I show binary search. I show, I show a modified binary search because you'll never get asked for binary search straight up. Usually you'll need to do some sort of um, modified binary search. So yeah, um, I hope that I covered a lot of ground there. I just want to give a high level overview of all the top six coding patterns. Again, it's two pointers, sliding window, DFS, BFS, backtracking, binary search. Those are the top six. Learn those and you should be re doing really good in your coding interviews. Um, I have a playlist built for this right here and this will be going in that playlist. And yeah, this was just a high level overview. If you want to learn deeply, look into all of these videos that I created where I explain the pattern in the first 10 minutes and I go into a lot of different examples. Work through the examples by yourself. Learning by doing is always the best. You don't want to be stuck in tutorial hell, but yeah, I hope everything makes sense here. And yeah, hope you have fun working through these and good luck on your coding journey and your algorithms journey. And hopefully if you're looking for a job, you land a job soon. I'll see y'all in the next video.